All right, I'm just walking down Front Street here in Ketchikan. So a lot of Gold Rush themed businesses. And oddly enough, there's a branch of Diamonds International here. So definitely catering to upscale cruise ship passengers. There's a massive cruise ship right there in the distance as well. A little bubble tea stand, fish and chips shack. And again, most of it's shut down, but I can see this being pretty bustling on a peak summer day at least. All right, so this is the restaurant where I'm meeting the executive director of the local tourism board for lunch, the Alaska King Crab Company. I cannot wait to get some seafood today. Let's head inside and get some lunch. All right, I am just sitting down to a King Crab lunch here at the Alaska King Crab Company right on Front Street in downtown Ketchikan. This looks absolutely outstanding. This is my first time having King Crab and you can see just how huge this leg is so served with fries amazing it's my first time trying king crab and that was a really delicious lunch amazing experience here i had to try some of alaska's best seafood so definitely recommend the alaska king crab company if you're visiting ketchikan it is just a gloomy afternoon here now nevertheless looks like the tourist crowds are thinning as people head back to their boats. I might go head out and check out the salmon ladder that's somewhere over there. And here you can see this incline railway basically that is currently out of service. The executive director of the tourism board was telling me that it may be back in service soon. They just got to order some parts. So check for that on your next visit to Ketchikan, I guess. But I'm out of luck. Here is the Yeltatzi salmon sculpture by Terry Piles, 2013. Great little view here in the heart of central Ketchikan. Absolutely beautiful. So this extension of the Creek Street Boardwalk down there is called the Ketchikan Salmon Walk. And it heads into this beautiful stretch of forest right here. Huge trees, it's so beautiful here. And there are little side trails all through here to head up higher to the hills above. Apart from the, you know, minor bear threat nearby, this is just an outstanding way to spend an afternoon. You can see the beautiful rapids here. There's the town behind, but uh, pretty incredible. This is where the salmon basically rush down the creek. Gorgeous scenery. I'm gonna continue further up here. It kind of winds its way along the edge of downtown, quite a ways actually. And here I've come to pretty raging rapids, little waterfall right here in the center of town. And this salmon ladder, as you can see right there. I'm gonna go get a closer look. And you can see these salmon jumping right up the ladder right there. Cause again, they're moving against the stream. And over here on this sign, you can see the different varieties of salmon that there are. And pink, silver, king, sockeye, chum. Use your hand as a mnemonic, I guess. Very cool. And every so often you can see a salmon jump right out of the water. Very cool. I am saying goodbye to the Inn at Creek Street. This place is really comfortable. Highly recommend it as a place to stay. Base yourself while you're in Ketchikan. For now, I am heading down to meet Kara, the executive director here of the Ketchikan Visitors Bureau, and she's going to take me out to Saxman, I believe it's called, with uh, tons of totem poles. It's a bit of a rainy day. All right, I've been down here to the Saxman Native Village Totem Park, and you can see plenty of totem poles from the local indigenous culture here in the Ketchikan area. So you can see how intricately detailed some of these totems are. Now this one has a face of an eagle. Goes on for a ways up to the top. A little person in the center. Very cool. So it's a pretty expansive park as you can see. And there's quite a few tourists here coming from the cruise ships. Looks like there's a longhouse over there as well. But plenty of interesting totem poles around here. 
So this was once the place with the most totem poles. Uh, but that's since changed, but pretty interesting. So I'm heading up this way to the clan house, which is really beautifully adorned with native art. And you can see the art is typical uh, Northwest Coast form line art. All right, heading inside the clan house. Sorry, folks, these are private tours. Oh. Oh, private tours, okay, sorry. No, sorry. Yeah. I wish we could oh, yeah. everyone. Fair enough, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Enjoy that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we got kicked out, but uh, it was worth seeing. <laughs> so you can see this totem has the image of a person's face. Looks like bear claws above it. And, uh, or maybe not, maybe that's just the legs of the eagle. But really interesting, it's such a cool culture here. So this is very similar to uh, Haida Gwaii, where I visited back in 2017. And Haida Gwaii is only about 50 miles or 80 kilometers from here, so relatively near. So again, this is the Klingit culture. And it also reminds me of uh, the same sort of native art that uh, you'll find in Alert Bay. And if you haven't already checked out that video, uh, make sure you do, because it is definitely full of totems and other similar uh, cultural icons. So this is amazing. The culture here is just so incredibly rich in terms of its, this art, these totems, such cool cultural expressions that you'll really only find in this area on the west coast of North America. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be. I think it's some sort of beaver or I'm not too sure, but your guess is as good as mine, but very cool nonetheless. A little trail here that heads through the woods. I'm not gonna go too far because there's a pretty real bear threat risk, but uh, might as well get a little bit into the lushness here just to get a couple of photos. It's just so beautiful here, as you can see. Such a beautiful part of Alaska, highly recommended. There's like moss everywhere, just ferns, beautiful surroundings. So amazing. So I'm guessing that this is some sort of wolf or fox, uh, some dog, canine at least, and there's a human-like head right above it, human's face. And uh, there they have Abraham Lincoln on the very top with his uh, hat there. Very interesting. So I just overheard who this fellow is at the top of the pole, and this is William Seward, who organized the purchase of Alaska from Russia and basically emancipated the Alaskans, the Alaska natives, from living under Russian rule. So they've honored him here by placing him at the top of the totem pole. And the city of Seward, Alaska is named after him. So very interesting. So there are plenty of tours that'll take you out here to Saxman if you're in the Ketchikan area and it is definitely worth your time. It's very cool to immerse yourself here in the culture of the local Klingit people and uh, just see their totem art. It's incredible, so very worthwhile. All right, they do have a little village store here as well, selling some souvenirs. Black bear. That can't be. That's, that's <laughs> fake as ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of beadwork, as you can see here. Bracelets, earrings, moccasins. Very cool. Salmon berry honey. Kind of unique. Even cheese. A lot of smoked salmon here as well. Recycled bowl, very cool. But we are heading out and I'm off to the airport to head back to Seattle. I have arrived back down here at the airport ferry terminal, which is very important to note that this is not the Ketchikan ferry terminal. The Ketchikan ferry terminal is over there, and that is the Alaska Marine Highway System terminal. So you can see the massive Kennecott there that's going to be heading north, I believe, or actually I believe it's heading south right now towards Bellingham, Washington. And that is the Ketchikan airport right across this little 
Tongass Narrows right here. So the ferry just goes back and forth across this little section, but this is the airport terminal, so make sure you don't get that confused. If you are coming to Ketchikan, don't go to the Ketchikan Ferry Terminal, come to the airport ferry terminal. Very important. It is $6 US to cross the Tongass Narrows right here to get to the Ketchikan Airport on the other side. So pretty straightforward and uh, it looks like it's ready for boarding any minute. So get ahead to the airport. All right, I have arrived here at Ketchikan International Airport. My flight leaves in about an hour and five minutes or so. So I'm gonna go check in and uh, board likely very shortly here. Sounds like the jet might have just landed. But in the meantime, amazing misty skies here in Ketchikan. You can see all these low-lying clouds just hugging the mountainsides. And there is Ketchikan, Alaska. But I've definitely enjoyed this adventure here in Ketchikan over the past two days. Thank you so much to the Ketchikan Visitors Bureau for arranging the logistics and sponsoring this video. Excellent destination in Southeast Alaska. I cannot recommend it enough. You will have a great time here and it's just incredibly beautiful. Thank you so much again for watching. If you have any questions about Ketchikan, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one.